In all of comic book history, there is no more iconic vehicle than the Batmobile, making its first appearance in Detective Comics 27, but first being mentioned by name in Detective Comics 48, and then reintroduced in Batman number 5, the Batmobile is as much a part of Batman's legacy as Alfred, Gotham City, or Robin. Having almost as many redesigns as Batman himself, the car has become bonded to the legendary hero who drives it. Throughout the last 80 years, we've seen many on-screen versions of Batman, and along with those Cape Crusaders came a series of equally awesome Batmobiles. Today's video is going to cover every single live-action Batmobile that we could find. Now, originally the plan was making a video that just outlined every single one of the live-action Batmobiles, but because there's so much information in here and I got super nostalgic about how the cars were conceptualized, built, and all their in-film features and functionality, um, I decided to rank them instead. I thought that would be fun for everybody. However, before we start, let's have a quick disclaimer. These rankings are just our opinion. They're based off a combination of aesthetics, features, functionality, and nostalgia. If you disagree, awesome. Feel free to let us know down in the comments section, politely. Thanks and enjoy the video. Coming in at number 12 is a 1939 Cadillac Series 61 convertible, and this was used by Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, as well as their secret identities Batman and Robin in Batman from 1943, Batman's first serial. It was driven with the top down as Bruce and Dick, and then with the top up when they were in disguise as Batman and Robin. Alfred was even kind enough to chauffeur the dynamic duo around in both identities. And this is far away from the designs we know today, but it is fairly accurate to what was shown in the comics of that time period. In Batman's second serial, the Batmobile was a maroon 1949 Mercury convertible. This also happened to be Batman's main driving around town car, which probably period-wise wouldn't have been the most inconspicuous vehicle to drive around in, but again, very accurate for the comic books of the time period. But personally, I don't think Batman cares, you know, because he's always trying to style on the haters, and this is a perfect car in that time period to do it. Coming in at number 10, we have the car from Batman Live. And what can I say about the Batman Live car that hasn't already been said about Tron Legacy? This car looks drastically out of place in terms of being a live-action Batmobile, but it does have a ton of cool in-show features. Used as a prop in the live-action Batman stage show, this car doesn't really need to function for performance. It's actually pulled along a line track to accommodate the small stage area. While this car does resemble a more animated style car similar to the Batmobile shown in cartoons like 2004's The Batman and The Brave and the Bold from 2008, this car just doesn't measure up to a lot of other entries on this list. In terms of its in-show features, it has a carbon fiber structure, hydrogen generator engine, and a water exhaust. It also doesn't have wheels, despite the fact what you're seeing looks like wheels. According to Bruce Wayne, the wheels on this car are actually anti-gravity lifters that propel the car forward and backwards. It has an afterburner capable of propelling the car to hyperspeed in seconds, and it has a sonar system so that the car can travel in the dark in complete pitch black undetected. It has laser flares as well as an anti-theft monitoring system and a full armory within the car that features Batman's full bat suit and gadgets. Number 9 is a heavily fortified matte black Ford Mustang that functions as a proto-Batmobile in the show Gotham. Now, let's be honest, this is probably the lowest effort Batmobile we've seen in modern times. It's basically just a, a car. Ford probably paid them a ton of money to have it in the show. This car does feature, according to Alfred though, a V8 engine with 460 horsepower, it's painted in an anti-reflective matte black coating, and as Alfred demonstrates, it's also 100% bulletproof. At number 8, we have the Batmobile from Batman and Robin. And the second iteration of Joel Schumacher's Batman was quite a downgrade in terms of appearance, but more closely, it resembles the original Batmobile of the comics from the late 1940s. It also features a number of changes from the previous designs that, at least to me, make a lot less sense. Like many previous Batmobiles, it was built out of a series of molds and based off concept art by Harold Baker. And it did happen to use the motor of a Chevy 350ZZ3. This Batmobile only appears in one scene when Batman is pursuing Mr. Freeze, and it's heavily frozen and presumed destroyed. However, in the very next scene, it shows up in the Batcave undamaged, but then not again for the entire rest of the film. 
And basically the main reason for this is because the rest of the film focuses on weird vehicles like a bat ice Zamboni and multiple bat cycles. And the reason for that is because Kenner wanted to sell more toys. Instead of featuring a closed, defended cockpit that seats two people like previous versions, it was now left wide open with only room for Batman, presumably because the pot of the film gave Robin his own vehicle, the Redbird Motorcycle. This Batmobile also featured a remote control system capable of disabling the Redbird Cycle's engines, shown in the beginning of the film when Robin attempts to jump a gap that Batman doesn't believe he can make. The car also featured a full video conference system, similar military style cockpit control layout, grappling hooks, and presumably a wide variety of other gadgets that we just don't see because they chose instead to make these stupid ass bat zambonis to sell toys. In seventh place we have the Titans Batmobile, and it's an extremely comic book accurate version of the Batmobile. It definitely looks like something you would have found in a Jim Lee drawing or even in modern Greg Capullo artwork. It features a lot of the same features that we've seen on other more popular Batmobiles, but we just don't have a lot of information about the car. Features, functionality, and specifications are basically a black box from both a real life and fictional perspective. I'm essentially just basing this ranking solely on the car's looks, which are pretty strong. Coming in at number 6 is the Batmobile in Batman Forever, and in my opinion, this is kind of a controversial vehicle. It had the tremendously difficult task of following what is arguably considered to be the best live action Batmobile of all time. And before we go any further, I just want to say that this is probably a really trendy thing to hate on a lot of elements of Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but I believe this Batmobile had a lot of really cool elements. Following the smash success of Tim Burton's Batman and Batman Returns was uh, Joel Schumacher's turn. His first bat flick was Batman Forever, and Joel's work has become notorious with comic book fans over the years for his use of neon lighting, bright and excessive colors, and noisy visuals. And the Batmobile in question here kind of parallels those sentiments. Designed by Alan Pike, Barbara Lang, Tim Flattery, and Charlie Zurian, they originally created five prototype designs, but all were rejected by Schumacher. Schumacher's inspiration and what he wanted the car to resemble was a living, breathing H.R. Geiger design, the legendary artist behind the Academy Award winning design team on the film Alien. The car was created using multiple full-size clay models and was completely built from scratch, and not a shell housed on another car underneath like previous versions. This car was created in three layers, each built, then a mold created of that build, and a new layer built on top of it. Essentially, it was three cars in one. The engine was a Chevy 350ZZ race car engine, and it also featured race car suspension. Additionally, other new features that I personally like was that the car featured a number of indirectly lit areas such as engine panels, wheels, and the undercarriage, which all glowed blue. Its in-film features were a split cockpit, jet engine with afterburner, advanced diagnostic systems, and a back fin that was capable of splitting in half, presumably to lower wind resistance, however it was only used once and at extremely low speeds. The car also featured two new movement methods. Wheels that could turn independently at 90 degrees to avoid missile fire, and the ability to route the afterburner's exhaust to launch the car's front end up so that the vehicle could fire a grappling hook out of the front, and yes, drive up walls. Inside the cockpit featured military style control systems and it was entered from the top like Tim Burton's Batmobile. There was also a rear camera system for threat detection. The car's accelerator was also not a floor panel, it was a lever in the center of the car. And I know some people dislike this Batmobile, but personally I think it's awesome, it's kind of nostalgic for me. I even had the light up official movie toy by Kenner and it was one of my favorite accessories growing up. And in fact I, I might still have it, I need to call my mom because I want that. Coming in at number 5 is Matt Reeves' new Batmobile, and it's only recently been shown off, but it's already looking really awesome, but very divisive. In our Discord alone, we've seen a ton of heated debates over the stylistic approach. However, in our opinion here, this car rocks. It's clearly based around Detroit-style muscle cars from the 70s, and the car screams American muscle. The conceptual drawings for this car came from Ashley Livingston Thorpe, who's an illustrator and graphic designer. He's also done a ton of other work for films like Total Recall, Blade Runner 2049, Ender's Game, Prometheus, X-Men First Class, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This Batmobile appears to take a more practical approach than the last 30 years of Batmobile designs. 
Keep in mind that Pattinson's Batman is only going to be in year two of his crime fighting career, so his arsenal hasn't really ramped up yet. We really don't even know what his support network for gadgets and accessories will look like yet. Will it be Alfred? Will it be Lucius Fox? Will it be somebody else? We don't know. Going for function over form, the car looks like it's going to have a number of awesome features. You can see on the hood that the car has an advanced air intake system and a massive exposed engine in the back, which structurally might not be the best move for Batman because, you know, it could be blown up, but it looks sick. It also appears to have recessed guns on the hood, and the front and rear lights definitely add to the intimidation factor. And the whole car is pulled together by massive racing tires. Needless to say, we're extremely excited to see what this car can do when it actually makes its big screen debut. One of the first and most truly iconic Batmobiles was Adam West's Batmobile from the 1960s. Designed by George Barris, this Batmobile has become truly iconic and has been featured in a ton of other television shows and appearances. The base of the car was actually a heavily modified Lincoln Futura concept car that never saw production. Reportedly, the original car cost somewhere in the ballpark of $250,000 to research and develop, which in today's dollar is closer to $2 million. However, if you add on the money it took to transform it into the iconic vehicle we know today, it racked up another $30,000. The vehicle itself also features the first usage of what would become a signature Batman Batmobile staple, the afterburner and rocket booster on the car. In terms of features and functionality, this Batmobile was essentially a drivable Deus Ex Machina machine. It features nearly an endless supply of Bat gadgets for whatever scenario Batman needed. And because it features so many, we're just going to rapid fire them off right now. So here's a list of ones that we could find without watching every single episode. Cable Cutter, Bat Ray Projector, Anti-Theft Device, Detectoscope, The Bat Scope, a bat eye switch, antenna activator, policed band cut-in switch, automatic tire inflation device, remote bat computer linked to the main bat computer, the bat phone, emergency bat turn lever, anti-fire activator, bat smoke, bat photoscope, net in the trunk, remote driving ability, rear camera, and a battering ram. This car is truly legendary, and at auction, the original car sold for $4.6 million in 2006, but it did sell again in 2016 for an undisclosed amount. At number 3, we have the Dark Knight's Batmobile, aka the Tumbler. When Christopher Nolan and David Goyer first started discussing the creation of their Batmobile, they designed it as a cross between a Ferrari and a Humvee. Many fans believe that the biggest inspiration for this design actually came from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. When Christopher Nolan originally conceptualized the design, he ended up making a loose mock-up out of Play-Doh and giving it to Nathan Crowley. Nathan Crowley then built an entire studio in Nolan's garage and began the process of building five models. Smashing together elements of Lamborghinis, stealth bombers, tanks, Hummers, and others, they finished their Batmobile design and contracted multiple German builders to bring it to life. Every bit of the car is custom made, starting with the jig and roll bar. Construction was overseen by Nathan with the assistance of Chris Colvert and Andy Smith. It has a Chevy V8 engine, hosier suspension, and a truck axle in the back. There's no front axle. The wheels are held from the outside in. Additionally, each wheel is balanced independently with its own independent suspension system. The cockpit opened systematically like the flowers of a petal per Nolan's design, and it weighed nearly two tons, with one ton of it being just in the rear axle and tires. The design also featured a number of flaps designed to generate enough wind force to keep the vehicle down when it was going at higher speeds. The car's in-film features include a turbine-powered jet engine with booster, as well as reinforced armor plating and a bulletproof windshield. It can make unassisted, rampless jumps thanks to its drastically reinforced front end suspension system. In fact, the front end was reinforced to a level that allowed it to smash through brick walls, freeway embankments, and other barriers. It features front mounted machine guns and rear ejectable exploding caltrops. It also has a rocket launcher and a retractable artillery cannon. It has an internal and external fire management system and an advanced diagnostic system. Also, when it's severely damaged by the Joker, the main chassis holding Batman can be ejected into a motorcycle-like vehicle called the Batpod, which is incredibly badass. 
Lastly, the tumbler features stealth technologies to help it avoid detection that are similar to a stealth bomber. Its black color scheme was also shown to make it nearly undetectable by helicopter in the dark. If Batman 1989's Batmobile was a scalpel, Nolan's tumbler was a chainsaw. It's an iconic design associated with a fan favorite film trilogy and one of the coolest designs ever seen on the big screen. The DCEU's Batmobile made its debut in Batman v Superman, where it was seen literally murdering anybody that came in contact with. The design was created by Patrick Tatopoulos on a napkin when drinking coffee at a coffee shop and presented to Zack Snyder. It was then brought to concept by Ed Notvidad and Joe Hurria and built by a talented team of engineers. It was, again, a completely customized frame, all created using computer-aided drawing and design. Its motor was a 550 horsepower engine placed below the main cockpit with a monster truck transfer case to flip the motor around and redistribute power. The brakes and rotors are custom made to account for the car's massive 8,500 pound weight. It can also raise and lower the height of the entire car with airbags placed near the shock system. The car's in-film features are also equally badass. It has a jet engine with afterburner in the back, a front-mounted rotary dual machine gun system, anti-ballistic system, reinforced armor plating with a bat motif in the front designed to resemble American muscle cars, and a new feature that's pretty cool, which is that the entire outside of the car has an electrical system running through it that shocks anybody unfortunate enough to be in its path. It's also easily the most indestructible Batmobile we've seen so far as it effortlessly drives through just about everything it comes in contact with. The interior is again designed after aircraft components and the cockpit seats too, which is a positive, with the passenger seat doubling as a storage area for additional bat gadgets. This car is insane. It's just a shame we didn't get to see more of it in future Batfleck films. But there can only be one champion. The completely reimagined Batmobile that came along with Tim Burton's iconic Batman and Batman Return films is a true work of art. This car helped change the dynamic for how live-action Batmobiles and comic book Batmobiles would be viewed to this day. Built on top of the chassis of a Chevy Impala, the entire body was reworked by designers Keith Short and Eddie Butler and crafted from polystyrene and covered in fiberglass. The design of this Batmobile was considerably more sleek and modern than previous incarnations and fit the aesthetic of Gotham City that Tim Burton had crafted. The car itself only actually sat six inches above the ground. The front of the car featured Honda Civic lights that were turned upside down and painted yellow. The back of the car was based on a Fiat Turbana, which was a gas turbine powered concept car from the 1950s with multiple circular afterburners. The back brake lights were actually stock backlights from Ferrari, painted red. The car's in-film features include the front of the vehicle having an exaggerated cylindrical turbine-powered jet engine with rear-facing afterburner. The tires featured bombs that would be dropped for offensive and defensive capability as well as being bulletproof. Recessed Browning machine guns were hidden on the fenders and could be deployed and then re-hidden for protection. It also featured a grappling hook which allowed the car to make exaggerated pinpoint turns, and rounding out the main features were a bat disc launcher, oil emitter, and smoke bombs. It even had a lifter that allowed the Batmobile to rotate 180 degrees. The inside of the car's cockpit fit two people with controls resembling aircraft or military weaponry. Instead of doors, Batman and his passenger entered and exited the vehicle through the roof via an automated sliding roof resembling an aircraft cockpit. The car also had a voice recognition system tailored to Batman and Alfred. It has voice recording capabilities as well and an advanced diagnostic and monitoring system installed. In Batman Returns, we also learn of a secondary feature that the Batmobile has that allows the car to pull its wheels inward and jettison the outer portion of the vehicle to make the Batmobile thinner so that it can navigate alleyways. However, the coolest feature in my opinion was the reinforced armor-plated shielding that Batman could deploy on the car when it's left in park. By simply uttering the words, shields, the car would become nearly impenetrable. Basically, this Batmobile defined multiple generations. In fact, if you ask most comic book fans what car they'd like to own more than any other, I think a ton of them would probably list this exact Batmobile as their dream car. I know I would. 
Thank you guys for checking out this video. It did take me a long time to do a lot of research. I watched a lot of documentaries and read a lot of information online and in magazines to make sure I got this stuff right for you. So if you did enjoy this, please drop a like on the video and leave me a comment below telling me which Batmobile was your favorite and why. Thanks again for checking this video out. This has been Nick from Key Issues and you know the motto, Batmobiles over everything.